What is up everybody, it is Aug here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're actually going to be going over some of the add-ons that I use. So I get a lot of requests recently to go over some of the more recent add-ons that I have. I do have my original add-on video, which I made back probably about a month ago, maybe two months ago, and so I'll link that above down in the description, you can check that out. But this is going to focus on some of the new add-ons I've gotten since, which are really useful for a mage. And I'll also show you guys exactly how to set them up, so you can use them yourselves. So we're going to get started off with item rack. And so item rack is actually very useful. I use this more on my warrior than on my mage. However, item rack is basically a way to set up different gear sets so that all you have to do is just hit a button either right here. You can just hit this button. You can actually even set it up with a key bind. And so with the warrior, what I do is, and I did this in a very recent video with my warrior going through ZF and farming ZF with a diamond flask is you can bind it to a key. So let's say we wanted to make a set for Kath and we wanted to include Frost Resist, right? We could bind that to a key like F9. Now, every time that we press F9, that's going to put on our full cast set gear, just like that. But let's say that we also wanted to make a Mara set. All we have to do is just overwrite this name at the top, type in Mara. Now with Mara, we're going to use Nature Resist. So we swap over to Nature Resist. We swap over into Fire Ruby, Uther Strength. Hit save, and now we're gonna bind this to F10. And now it's bound to F10. Now all we do to swap the gear, F9, F10, F9, F10. And so item rack is really helpful just because it really quickly allows you to swap gear to whichever gear set that you need to use at the time. It's very useful in some other classes, especially with like healers and things like that, or maybe in B2B well, if you have a fire resist set that you need to swap over to, swapping over to the fire resist set to get going really quickly. Second add-on that we're going to go over is actually details. So details is an add-on that most people use and most people are very familiar with. However, we've had some updates to details. And so what we've did is we actually set up frags. And so frags are very useful for one thing, and that's telling the individual actual mob kill. So before we went over kill track, and so if you do slash KT space I, you can pop up kill track and we can see kill track over here. And that keeps track of the total kills. But in a place like Mara, we want to see the individual kills that we have based on the individual mob type. And so we have poison sprites, corruptors, petritus tricksters, etc. And so you can actually set up details to keep track of this for you, which is really, really nice. So the way that you do this is you go up into your normal place where you'd pick the various different things you want to keep track of. And under damage and frags is actually the count. So, you know, typically you'd have, you know, healing and damage done or something like that. But go to damage, go to frags, and then every single time that you're on the run, it's going to keep track of the exact number of mobs you kill. Highly, highly useful, especially when you're learning things like Mara or you're trying to experiment, trying to keep more mobs than normal. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to go over is my shields that I have. So a lot of people, let's go saying hi. So a lot of people are curious what the shield add-on is. And so every single time that I put on a shield, whether it be fire ward, mana shield, anything like that, it's right, popping up right to the right of me. And then if I take damage, what it's gonna do is it's going to drop down the shield so it can kind of keep track of how much I have left on my barriers. This is very useful in things like ZG where you could get dazed or very useful in Mara where you're getting hit by poison sprites and you're trying to keep track of how much of your ice barrier you have left until you're just going to get obliterated basically and so the way to set this up actually you could just do exclamation point barrier in my stream and this will give you the link to this however it is nan shield in weak aura so if you do nan shield weak aura in google you're gonna be able to find that once you have it you can hop into here you can go into nan shield and you can actually go over to conditions. And so a lot of people when they download it have much, much different colors. And so this is a custom build that I was able to receive. And it's based on specific colors for, you know, more like mage style. And so the way to set up the colors is actually going over to the conditions tab. And in the conditions tab, we can actually see all the different damage types you could receive. So for example, all is kind of vague. So let's focus on physical. So physical damage, any type of physical damage we would receive, if we were to pop like priest shield, and this would be this color. Arcane, purple. So if we popped an arcane pot when we're fighting Shazra. Fire is orange. Frost, blue, holy, yellow. You get the point. When you just download this plane, or if you do exclamation point barrier and download it from my stream, 
you're not going to have these colors. And so in order to set it up, what you have to do is you have to go to that specific kind of damage set, click on these two colors, and then go and just change the color in here to whichever color that you would like it to be. And then once you have that color set for these two, you are good to go. And so that actually can change the colors. A lot of people really like the add-on, but they want to make sure that they have the colors changed. And so that's how they do that. Now, as far as my instance history add-on down in the bottom, a lot of people see the instance history constantly and they're asking what add-on that is. So instance history is actually going to be a week or as well, and it is instance history extended. And so some people just have the regular instance history. Now I have instance history extended. And what that actually shows is it shows the actual time it takes to do each of the resets. And so last night, for example, we did Mara. Then we did five runs and we had some runs that were 14 minutes. We had some runs that are 12 minutes. And so it just shows the individual time that each run takes, which is really useful because you can kind of see and compare if you're getting faster, if you're getting slower, what your, diff what your different strategies are causing to have different times and things like that. So I'll have a link down in the description below to, do, to download this. Some people have problems though when they try to get it loaded and they just can't see it. So here's some key things to remember when you're trying to use instance history extended. One, you need to be the leader of the group. And two, you need to go in and out of an instance twice. So it's not going to keep track when you haven't gone into an instance because there's nothing to keep track of. Your instance lockout only stops when you leave an instance, not when you go in an instance. So you need to go in an instance, come out, and then go right back into an instance. And then it should load. Now, if it's not loading, however, what you can do is you can go into custom options over here in the week or setting. And you can set this display threshold to zero. Now this display threshold should only, if it's at two, should only pop up when you go in and out of instance. However, if you set it to zero, sometimes this fixes some of the bugs that people are having if they can't see it. So I highly recommend if you're having some issues, try setting it to zero, see if that works. Next week or that we have is actually clear casting. And so if we move this week or you can see this clear casting in the middle. So a lot of people were saying that they're having troubles noticing when they have a clear casting proc. And even if they have scrolling text or things like that, they're going to see the clear casting pop up, however, and the buff, but they're not going to know very easily that they have a clear casting proc. So we have this clear casting add on which we downloaded. And thanks to Real Esquire, who gave us a link for this. And so if you want to download this, I'll have it down in the description below. It's real easy, though. You don't have to change anything. Once it pops up, it pops up. Now, you could probably go into conditions and you could probably change the color somehow or trigger maybe. I haven't experimented with it. I like the color, but you could probably mess around with the color a little bit if you want to change the color of this. Next, we're going to go over some of the looting add-ons and the gold making add-ons. So in the last video, I talked about TSM and loot appraiser. So definitely reference that video if you're curious about TSM and loot appraiser. But here we're going to focus on how I loot incredibly fast. And so the way that I loot incredibly fast is actually through a combination of three add-ons. And I did talk about this in a special a specific video about how to loot incredibly fast and I'll link that down in the description below as well if you want to watch the whole entire thing but there's basically three things that allow it to happen number one is called speedy auto loot so if we go into our add-ons come down to the bottom we have speedy auto loot so it says loot at ludicrous speed but basically what it is is it causes you to not render the in-game loot table when you loot something now this is useful because Let's say that we're going through Mara and we have 187 mobs. The in-game loot table isn't loading. We're basically rendering it quicker. So that's useful. However, it's best used when paired with other things. And so a lot of people are going to want to see that in-game loot table. And I definitely did. And so what I did was I actually got another add-on to kind of circumvent that issue. So I want to be able to see the loot table or at least see what it's dropping. Because what, what if Edge Masters drops, right? And I'm just not even paying attention. And I just loot Edge Masters, and then I just go and not even paying attention, have no idea. Maybe vendor them. I would hope that I wouldn't vendor them, but you know, maybe we do. So I downloaded another add-on called Scrolling Loot Text, and so Scrolling Loot Text is going to be very useful. And so here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to come into RFC and we're going to kill a few mobs just to show exactly how it works. So we go over to the first group of mobs, go ahead and just kill them real quick with a shatter. Okay, so now we have three mobs dead. Now, the way that we're going to loot is you could typically just click on a mob and it's going to loot it. However, what you can do is you can actually set up a keybind. So if you go into keybinds and you go into the targeting section, you scroll down to interact with mouse over. If you 
find this to scroll or alt mouse or sorry mouse wheel up and down or alt mouse wheel up and down shift alt shift mouse wheel up and down something with mouse wheel up and down basically what you can actually do is you can just hover your mouse over the corpse hold alt and mouse wheel up and down in my case and it loots them so i won't click this mob i scroll over and it looted it and that was it now you see that we got no loot but if we go these two we're going to see a loot pop up in the middle of the screen based on what we got and so that's going to tell us exactly what we got from the drops so that we can keep track of what we're getting we know if we're getting something good and things like that that's going to be scrolling loot text so speedy auto loot is going to cause you to loot quicker having the uh, scroll as soon as you scroll over a loot to loot it is going to also allow you to loot quicker and then scrolling loot text is going to make sure that you don't miss any loot and so those are the three add-ons that i recommend for you looting so the next that we have on our list is farm log and so farm log is actually very useful and you saw the pop up when we went over to rfc basically what it does is you can keep track of the individual gold that you get per instance so the way they get up kind of like the dialogue to pop up on the stream is do fl show so slash fl show will pop this up then what you can do is you can actually set it based on individual instances, you know, PvP or something like that. Definitely turn off PvP mode. We can go over to is ZG and see how much gold we're getting from ZG. And so we can see that from the auction house, we've gotten 1,019 gold. Gold per hour, about 110, including any wipes. You can see your individual loot that you're getting, everything like that. And so the way to get this all set up is actually to go ahead and pop this HUD button which pops up this in the corner and then go over to farm sessions, type in whatever you want to type in Maradon, for example, and then it will keep track. If you want to reset your session, so you don't want to keep track of that session, you click this plus button and that sets a new session. But the way to make sure that there's amounts for every single one of these, because obviously you want amounts of gold that you're actually making for these farms is to go into the auction house, open up the auction house. I'll switch over to normal UI and do slash FL space AH. And what this is actually going to do is it's actually going to scan the AH for all the items, populate them into your system so that you know exactly what you're going to be basically getting from each of the mobs. And then it's automatically going to keep track, kind of like TSM going through and keeping track of the individual prices that you have for all the items as you loot them. So it's very, very useful. You can keep track of individual instances, pop open that HUD. You can also set it up so that it only keeps track when you're in an instance. And so if you go into inter interface options and you go over to farm log, you can set this right here, auto switch instances. And so this is gonna stop when you leave the instance and gonna restart when you go back into the instance. So this is nice when you have something like ZG and you're just trying to reset the instance, it's not gonna keep a perpetual count, or maybe you go back to Orgrimmar. It's not gonna keep a perpetual count going the entire time. It's only gonna be when you're actually in the instance. Also keeps track of you know mob kill counts and things like that. A bunch of individual things. Experiment with these settings a little bit. You can change the age minimum quality so that you can just have grays getting tracked and the thing. I just set it to uncommon, because you know, you're gonna get a ton of grays, and yeah, it's great to keep track of that, but you're not going to be selling those grays in the auction house. So set it to green probably, or if you want to set it to the blues, that works too. But you can run through all of these settings and set it up that way. The next add-on that we're going to talk about is actually how to see the health of individuals. Now, obviously I'm not in a group with these individuals, so I can't see them, but I can see NPCs and I can see my own health. And so a lot of people are very curious, how do you see the health of individual mobs, individual people and things like that? That is through an add-on called Modern Target Frame. And so what happened originally is that there was real mob health but that actually got banned. And so real mob health can no longer be used to see that. And so what we had to do is we had to swap over to Modern Target Frame. And this is version 1.3.4. But it keeps track and it shows you the exact health that mobs have, that players have when you're in groups with them and things like that. It's very useful to be able to see stats and compare stats and things like that. So the last add-on that we're going to go over is actually neat plates. And so a lot of people are curious, when I know about these mobs, how do I see these timers up at the top? Or if I use Cone of Cold, which is 100% going to kill these mobs, how do I see the Cone of Cold timer up at the top of the mobs? And so this is something I got very recently. And I mentioned it in a couple of videos, but it's very useful. It's called neat plates. And so 
formerly I relied on uh, classic core iterations, but now with neat plates, which is right here, this is very useful to be able to see all of that so you can keep track. Now, the one thing that I would recommend is that it's going to be pretty in your face when you first you know, set up the add-on. So go into interface options, go into neat plates, and actually change this to blizzard. So typically it's set on neon when you get started, but neon's kind of large and very hello, basically. If you set it to blizzard, it's more like the standard blizzard frames, but you're still able to see those buffs and debuffs and things like that that you're casting on all those mobs. So this is a big list of the add-ons. If you have any questions on any more add-ons, please let me know down in the comments below. I will list every single one of these with timestamps. I'll list every single one of these with maybe not links because most of these I just download from the Twitch classic wow section. And so I recommend just using the Twitch app, but you can find all these on Curse Forge and all everything like that. But I'll have a link down below the week ores so you can just have week or imports. And then I'll also have timestamps for everything. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.